Dr. Fauci is back in the hot seat and Americans are demanding answers. It wasn't too long ago when many of us were stuck in our homes, forced to follow mandates, and even take medicine just to keep our jobs. Now, the issue here is that this was around the same time when a couple of things were happening. Inflation took off, the cost of goods soared sky high, and it didn't matter as much if you did your grocery shopping in Costco, Walmart, Target, or any other retailer for that matter, our expenses just kept going up. And it was even worse for those who are on fixed incomes such as Social Security, SSI, and SSDI, especially since the COLA increases that they were receiving during that time were barely making a dent in the cost of goods. Now, the funny thing is, most of us remember that time like it was yesterday. But if you ask Dr. Anthony Fauci, he would tell you the same thing hundreds of times. Oh, what's he saying? He's saying that he doesn't recall what happened just a few years ago. Meanwhile, talk about turmoil. You and Anthony Fauci have some of the most famous sparring sessions over the last few years. Now you're going to go behind closed doors. Uh, he has to go behind closed doors in front of uh, your committee. What is your question? What are some things that you want answers to? You know, the biggest lie from Anthony Fauci was that uh, the United States government and with his approval did not fund gain of function research in Wuhan. We now have the Department of Energy, the FBI, and actually a group of scientists at the CIA all agree that in all likelihood, COVID-19 came from a lab in Wuhan that was funded by U.S. taxpayer dollars. Anthony Fauci has continued to deny this, and I believe that to be a lie, and I hope he's challenged on that. But it also is even worse than lying about funding it. There's supposed to be a safety committee that's supposed to review dangerous research on this. It was set up in 2017 when they began funding this dangerous research at the behest of Anthony Fauci, who's always been in favor of gain-of-function research. When they began funding again, they set up a safety committee. Well, guess what? This research in Wuhan skipped that safety committee. They never went there. And the only way that happens is with Anthony Fauci's approval. You know, I respect that we have different opinions about what happened with the C-19 virus. I respect the fact that people should have the right to do what they want with their bodies, so long as it's within their will, okay? But shouldn't these hearings be made available to the public as it happens? Because I believe that this isn't just something that the Americans wanna know. I believe that this is a concern from people from all across the globe. Wouldn't you think so? Which is why we don't have footage of Fauci and these recent hearings. However, I have an idea as to how it looked like. How? Well, it was on X. You see here, it starts with saying that Fauci, even though this was such a memorable time in history and probably his career, claimed that he did not recall important C-19 information or even conversations a record 100 or more times. Did they MIB this guy or something? You know, kind of like, you know, those neuralizer things that they had during that movie where, where they would make people forget, kind of flashy thing people. Not only that, but he's also taken a page out of his own playbook from two years ago when he repeatedly switched up the meaning of gain of function research. Now, I'm sure that you guys remember it, but just to kind of jog your memory, here's what happened back then. First of all, gain of function is a very nebulous term. We have spent, not us, but outside bodies, a considerable amount of effort to give a more precise definition to the type of research that is of concern that might lead to a dangerous situation. You are aware of that. That is called P3CO. We're aware that you deleted gain of function okay. from the NIH well, website. Well, I can get back to that in a moment if we have time. But let's get back to the operating framework and guide rails of which we operate under. And you have ignored them. The guidelines are very, very clear that you have to be dealing with a pathogen that clearly is shown and very likely to be highly transmissible in an uncontrollable way in humans and to have a high degree of morbidity and mortality. And that you do experiments to enhance that. Hence the word EPPP, -P -P, enhanced pathogens of potemic, potem potential. So when EcoHealth Alliance took the no, virus, well, SHC014, I, I finish... and combined it with WIV1 and caused a recombinant virus that doesn't exist in nature, and it made mice sicker, mice that had humanized cells, you're saying that that's not gain of function research? According to the framework 
and guidelines. So what you're doing is defining a way gain of function. No. You're simply saying it doesn't exist because you changed the definition on the NIH website. This is terrible, and you're you're completely trying to escape right. the idea that we should do something about trying to prevent a pandemic from leaking from a lab. That's probably happened again. I mean, like, what is it about changing the definition of something just to prove a point, huh? Because Fauci has been very confident about his word so far. However, there's an instance where he had backtracked. Now, according to this latest hearing, which has lasted nine hours, by the way, Fauci admitted and testified that he signed off on every single foreign and domestic NIAID grant. He did so without reviewing the proposals. I mean, that alone shouts out negligence, right? But to make things even worse for him, he backtracked on a previous statement where he said that he wasn't aware of gain-of-function research in Wuhan, China, since a 2020 email released by the Select Subcommittee proves that he knew about it. Here now, Chairman of the Select Subcommittee on the Coronavirus Pandemic, Doctor and Representative Brad Wenstrup of Ohio. Good to see you, sir. Thank you. Too. you. Thank uh, you. Most important revelation. Uh, well, there are many revelations. I think you can start with one uh, that, you know, he was very uh, cooperative, if you will, but over 100 times just on the first day, he couldn't recall. Uh, for you take the Fifth Amendment ever? No, because we really weren't doing a deposition. Now, he is vulnerable to perjury because he's speaking to Congress. Um, but this is a transcribed interview, so it's a little bit, little bit different. So they're not sworn in, but he is warned that you, you could perjure yourself. So big, big things here. Uh, six feet of social distancing. Was there science behind that? He, he said there's, there was not. What he came out and said was this just kind of somehow came out of nowhere, and we just, we just went with it. I mean, this were some of the conversations. Mask that mandates. We had. Same, same with the mask. Well, you know, we just said use whatever mask uh, because we, we're having trouble getting, getting masks. No, there's no science behind it. Was there a double blind study? No, that's kind of hard. But so why were we forcing these things? And, I, and I'll just tell you as a doctor, you put on a mask, you just put cloth over your face. If you have COVID, you don't want to be wearing that mask because you're trying to expel what you have. And instead, you wouldn't blow into a handkerchief and put it over your face. Now, it's not entirely clear here as to what what statement that they're talking about. I'm just going off the narrative here, but I have to ask, if he has to backtrack on any statement, doesn't that mean that he probably lied? I mean, is perjury not a thing in the United States anymore? And here's a genius part of this though. And sure, we can kind of categorize it in the doctor evil kind of way of thinking, right? He says that he signed off on each grant, right? But he also said that he didn't check all of them, meaning that he can basically reject knowing about any research since he didn't check a single proposal when he was there. You see how this works? That's amazing. Fauci on his end has repeatedly said that this entire thing has been politicized, saying that Republicans are politicizing public health issues. But do you guys agree with that? Now, if you ask me, this isn't a matter of politics. This isn't about being a Democrat, a Republican, or even an independent. This is about basic human decency. The American people want to know the truth. I mean, heck, the entire world wants to know the truth. The question is, will we get it this time around? I'm not sure. However, I do know I'll be here every day to try and get you caught up and informed with whatever is happening right now. Now, before I go, I just want to thank you guys for your time. Keep safe, and I'll see you on the next one.